In this episode, let's talk about digital audio field recorders, and in particular, the Zoom F3 field recorder. When I saw this device, I was compelled. I just had to get it, because it seems like it checks off all of my requirements. And this is a new generation of digital audio recorder that records in 32-bit floating-point digital audio. And I think that's very exciting. So how I got here is that I have other digital audio field recorders, and they all work well. But the recorders that I have all have some kind of fatal inconvenience. Things like short battery life, or it's awkward to get the files from that device onto the computer, or because of the way that the controls and the display work on the unit, I'm never quite sure if I'm getting my audio levels set perfectly. And so I was looking for a device which was simple, that would give me really high quality recording, that I could basically just push record and go and not have to fuss with the unit too much. And that would later interface easily with the computer so I can pull those files down. I was looking at the Tascam DR10X, which is a tiny little unit that you could even plug right onto the bottom side of a microphone. Or you could use it with a cable, either way. And that looked like a simple device that might just fit my needs. But it has a couple fatal flaws for me. And one is that it's a mono-only device. It only records a single track. And for most of what I do, that would be perfectly fine. But that just seems a little bit limiting. Sometimes I like to record stereo. And the bigger factor is that that unit doesn't supply phantom power. So it would limit my selection of microphones and I wouldn't be able to use some of my favorite microphones with that unit. And so as I was looking around, I saw this Zoom F3, which was released earlier in 2022. And this unit seems to have all of the features that I need for my productions. It's a stereo unit. Now, sometimes you need more than two channels, and there are recorders that address that need, but for me, 99% of the time, all I need is stereo or mono, and this will do that. This unit has really high-quality preamps in it that are super quiet, so you can get great recordings. It supplies phantom voltage, so you can use condenser microphones with it. It has all of the usual features, such as high-pass filtering, so you can roll out subsonic noise in your recordings. It records to a memory card, not included, and you can put in up to a one terabyte memory card, which will let you record for days. I think it's 180 hours of recording time. On the back, there's a door which uh, lets you access two AA batteries, so it's standard batteries. You can use rechargeable batteries. And you get six hours or thereabouts of runtime off of a set of batteries. If you have phantom power engaged, probably a little bit less. And so this seems like a really perfect device for what I'm doing. You can record in stereo on it, and it will create a single wave file with left and right audio tracks. Or you could set it up so that it records two separate wave files, one for each channel independently. And you can, of course, also have it just record on one of the two channels and just lay down a single track. So it's super flexible that way. It's so small. It's uh, really a tiny package. It's mostly made out of metal, so it's heftier than it might appear. And it just has a good build quality feel to it. It seems like a quality device. Uh, it has these rails on the side so you can strap it onto something. And you could even slip your belt through it and wear the device. How cool is that? And so this seems really compelling, but the number one feature that just made me jump on it is that this is a 32-bit floating point digital audio recorder. And there's only a handful of recorders out there at the moment that support that format, but I think it's an exciting format. Hey, quick pause. I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you to everybody who's subscribed. It's because of you that this channel has grown. I also want to remind you to take a look in the description down below this video, and you may find links to products that are mentioned in this episode. 
If you choose to purchase a product by using one of those links, I may be eligible for a small referral commission on qualifying purchases, but there's no additional charges to you. Okay, let's get back to the video. Because this recorder is using 32-bit floating point audio, it has tremendous dynamic range. 1500 dB of dynamic range, which is far greater than any sounds on Earth. So that means that the loudest sounds or the quietest sounds can be accurately captured in the file format that this uses. And because of that, there's no need for an input gain control. All the devices that we've worked with to this point pretty much have had a preamp gain control, but not this. It just simply takes in whatever signal comes in at whatever level it is and records it. And you're not going to overload the system. Now there is a gain control underneath the display here. So when you put a signal into this device, it could be a line signal, it could be a mic signal, whichever, you will see on the little LCD display a waveform of the audio that's coming in. And you can use the buttons right underneath the display here to make that waveform bigger or smaller. And so you want to just set it so that it looks reasonable. And that is a scaling factor that gets stored with the recording. So when the recording is imported into your post-processing, it comes out at what appears to be a reasonable gain level. But that doesn't actually affect the audio storage. It just is a gain offset value. So regardless of how loud or how quiet the signal is, it comes into your audio system undistorted. And so I think that's really compelling. So with this guy, I can just plug a mic in, turn it on, hit record, and I'm assured that I'm going to get a quality recording with no fuss. And when it comes time to pulling that file off and going into the computer, I can plug a USB cord into this and sync it up with the computer. And in my experience, it hooks up with no drama at all. It's just a compatible Windows device. My computer sees it and I can slide the files over. No issue at all. Another feature the F3 has is that it can work as a sound card in your computer. So you could connect your computer to this device and then there's a uh, couple of jacks in the bottom of it for audio out, which could then go into your powered speakers or your hi-fi system, and you could use this as a soundboard in the computer. The F3 is, of course, a stereo recorder, so you can record two inputs. If you need more than two inputs, there are choices. Zoom also makes the F6 and the F8 field recorders, which also record in 32-bit floating-point format, but the F6 has six inputs and the F8 has eight inputs. Of course, it's a little bit larger package and a little bit larger price point. Sound Devices also has a series of field recorders that will record in 32-bit floating point format. And they make great equipment. They appeal to the professional, semi-professional video market, I believe. And uh, they make great stuff with industry-leading preamps and a higher price point than the Zoom products. And then Tascam has a recorder out, which is the X8 handheld recorder, which is a pretty feature-packed device. It's a handheld recorder that uses a smartphone-style touchscreen interface on it with lots of options, and it supports four XLR inputs and has two built-in microphones, which can be removed, and those can be used as an additional two inputs as well. I've got some Tascam equipment, and I've had really good luck with it, but I've seen some reviews of the X8 portable recorder that have been less than entirely positive. So check that stuff out if you're thinking about going in that direction. So let's talk just a moment about this 32-bit floating-point audio format. Some folks would argue that digital audio has been at 16 bits and 44.1 kilohertz, and the world has spoken that that is perfectly fine. There's lots and lots of CDs and MP3s out there, and not too many people complain about the sound quality. As a matter of fact, we've tried to put out super audio CDs into the marketplace, and they didn't do well. People just didn't see the advantage to it. 
And so a lot of folks would say that 16-bit digital audio is perfectly fine. It has a signal to noise ratio of 94 dB. What more do you need? And with a sampling rate of 44.1 kHz, you get flat response out to 20 kHz, which is the entire range of human hearing. In the video world, we tend to do sampling rate of 48 kHz, which gives us even a little bit more high frequency response. And this has been perfectly fine for just about everybody. And then, for those few that aren't satisfied with that, the bit rate of 24-bit digital audio is available on most devices, and that'll give you a signal-to-noise ratio of over 140 dB. And of course, there are even higher sampling rates, such as 96K, 192K, and that would give you flat response out into the ultrasonic range. So these existing formats should give us excellent audio recordings. And they do. But the flaw with those formats is that they're scaled in such a way that once your recording level hits 0 dB, that's all you got. Beyond 0 dB, you've run out of digital numbers and it can't be represented in the file and you do a hard clip and things sound bad. And so you need to be sure that your audio levels, when using a standard digital recorder, never peak above 0 dB. Otherwise, you'll hit harsh distortion. In 32-bit floating-point audio, the format is not just one extension off of 24. It's actually a different format internally. And in the F3 recorder, they use a pair of audio digi digital converters that um, are basically stacked on top of each other. So they have one of them that handles quiet sounds and one that handles loud sounds. And they have some proprietary software that slides between the two of them as the levels change. And it appears to me to work really well. And so through the use of that and through the use of storing the audio in a 24-bit format with an 8-bit gain offset, that allows them to have a range of plus 700 dB or more from zero and minus 700 dB or more from zero at a ridiculously large dynamic range, which prevents you from ever overloading the recording format or having sources that are so quiet that they can't be rendered properly in the recording format. Now, does that mean that you can record absolutely anything without problems? No, of course not. There are limitations in other parts of the signal chain. For example, if you try to record a nuclear blast, well, that's not going to work very well because it will melt your microphone. Or if you put your microphone right next to a howitzer cannon, chances are the microphone itself would distort. Even though the recording format could capture the sound, the microphone can't. The microphone also has a little bit of self-noise or hiss in the background, very, very low. And likewise, inside of your recording equipment, no matter what it is, the preamplifiers have a limit to how much voltage they can handle coming in before they distort. And the preamplifiers themselves will have just a little tiny bit of background hiss. Now, every piece of electronics is going to have some audio hiss, and that's Brownian motion, which is if we were to zoom in on some piece of physical matter, be it the transistors in the device, the wire, your coffee cup, anything, if you zoom in further and further and further with a microscope, you'd see that that matter is made out of molecules, and those molecules are made out of atoms. And the atoms have a field of electrons around them, and those electrons are vibrating and buzzing. And it's that electron motion that imparts a little tiny bit of signal into the wires that we hear is hiss in our audio. And so every piece of audio gear at some point is going to have some low-level hiss, and there's just no way around that. Uh, however, the preamps that are in the Zoom F3 are extremely good. They're some of the quietest preamps in the industry. Uh, the sound devices equipment also has extremely quiet preamps. 
So this device will let you record quiet things with the least amount of hiss. And of course the microphone that you use has an impact as well, so pay attention to that spec, the self-noise spec. And um, I think with 32-bit floating point audio, it might become a new recording standard because it takes so much of the fuss out of recording. You don't have to worry about setting levels or making sure that your levels are set high enough that you get a clean, noise-free recording and low enough that you don't overload the recorder. Those days are behind us now. With uh, something like this, or with one of the other 32-bit floating point recorders, you can just hit record and know that you're going to get a good recording if you've used a good mic and have decent mic placement. So it takes a lot of the worry, concern, and fuss out of doing location recording. And uh, I think it's compelling. I think it's a new day. I think it's interesting. I hope you found this interesting. And if you did, and you're a subscriber, welcome back and thank you.